Many people are stuck working at home right now. And according to a new survey, 77% of workers want to continue to work from home once the pandemic is over. The COVID-19 crisis has accelerated the global embrace of remote by at least 10 years. So you have tens of millions of people now that are suddenly remote, many of whom are doing this for the first time. It's a new experience for many employers, too. For some people, there's a real fear of if you send all of your employees to work from home, won't they just watch Netflix, play video games, you know, not get dressed, and you'll still be paying them? So some employers are turning to productivity management software or other kinds of surveillance to track their employees while they work from home. As a result, employee tracking software has seen a significant spike in recent months. The idea of being tracked at work isn't anything new. We sign off a lot of our rights when we go to work for someone. And, you know, it's in that big pile of, of paper that you get on your first day. In many ways, surveillance at work goes back as far as work does. Employers have an interest in trying to understand what people are doing when they're paying for them to be at work. Anyone who works in IT can tell you that if you are, in fact, working in the employer's place of business using employer-provided laptops and or other computer equipment, and you are transmitting information across employer-owned networks, you are absolutely being monitored and surveilled. Many of these kind of monitoring processes have already been experimented on on what people consider to be low-skilled workers. Uh, in the UK, for example, it's been very common to have biometric scanners for cleaners to know, you know how long they've been in a room for and you know, how quickly things have been done and so on, is a lot of these technologies have been introduced already and now they're starting to kind of flow up the chain of the workforce and be used elsewhere. And I think the shift to working from home means that many of those forms of surveillance, which perhaps we have taken for granted while we're at work, are now reaching into our homes. Many companies that existed pre-pandemic have already developed software to track employees in a variety of ways. There's ProtoScore, HubStaff, InterGuard, Time Doctor, TerraMind, VeryClock, Transparent Business, and many others. ProtoScore alone has seen a 600% uptick in interest from prospective customers since COVID-19. Recently, CNBC's Eric Chemi spoke with its CEO. We take a number of data points, be it a CRM tool that they are currently using, a phone system like a Vonage, an email system, it could be G Suite or Microsoft 365. We aggregate all those data points in a real-time proprietary dashboard that provides them a weighted score. We record and transcribe all your phone calls. Well, everything I say on the phone is transcribed. So we now record it. All of it is recorded. We use AI tools to massage that into a real-time score that you see, as does your boss and the CEO and the VP of sales and the chief revenue officer. Everyone is seeing the productivity. Every morning you come to your desk, you have an email from us. You have your productivity score, your proto scores on the first line of the email. Your score yesterday for proto score was 74. Your colleagues were 90. They've done more. And it's a tool that you could gauge yourself against your peers. One example of a company that uses ProtoScore is Vonage. I've recently, in the last year, pre-pandemic, gone to a virtual sales force because of the capabilities with ProtoScore. Was there ever any pushback from employees that are like, oh, I don't like that you're tracking everything. This feels a little too big brothery. You know, that, of course, it depends. But again, that always depends on who... You know, in sales, if you want to be victim, you can always play a victim, right? Right. You know, guys who go out and get things done are those who use these tools for their advantage. And um, they know we're watching, which is always good. Another company working in the same space is Transparent Business, which takes a different approach, but has seen a 500% spike in users month to month since COVID-19. Transparent Business is different from ProtoScore in that it doesn't track anything until workers manually clock in but it records those exact times and uploads a stream of desktop screenshots to your manager when you are clocked in. You do have the ability to delete those screenshots after the fact or clock out and stop them entirely. Our technology allows for the monitoring and tracking of the work that the user, the worker, reports as work done. 
basically instead of reporting to an office, we report to the cloud and the cloud is the canvas and digitizing the workflow enables us to work better and keep people accountable for the work that they do. Transparent Business says that this type of system is both easier for the worker and ultimately results in them having more privacy. It's about consent. When you have a worker going to the office, you are monitoring them all the time. There are cameras everywhere, and this is an invasion to the privacy. People are super stressed out. They don't need a micromanager on top of their head. So with this, they just can say, okay, my process is transparent. I'm actually working. So as I'm actually working, I can share with what I'm doing with you. For one registered nurse in Arizona, the implementation of new tracking software at her job with a major U.S. healthcare company had a huge impact. About a year in, they switched over to this real-time energy. So instead of going per case, it was per amount of time that you were actively working. And they knew exactly when you started your computer and you locked in, how much time you were on the phone. Everything was marked, counted. One of my, my, my friends said, I'm quitting. This is micromanaging. I just, I'm not going to do it. And I thought, why are you getting so angry? Because if you're doing your job, it should measure out. But then got my one-in-one, I got in trouble because I had too much non-productive work. I didn't move my mouse or I wasn't, I I had too much lock time or something and I got in trouble. And that, that upset me because I know I'm a hard worker and that shouldn't have happened. The conclusion of all of this is that I left my job. (laughs) It just, um, it was just too stressful. It was, I just didn't, um, I didn't enjoy what I was doing anymore. But the big question is, does this actually get results? Because for many managers and CEOs, losing productivity as a result of more workers working from home is a huge concern. As a C-level employee or colleague myself, as a person, I've always been very fearful of employees being remote. I've always wanted them in the office. I wanted to look at them, feel them. I'm a very tactile leader, I think, and I wanted that. And I was always uncomfortable. Are they working? How do we assess them working? And this has comforted me. And a lot of CEOs I talk to that are using the the product now, it's comforting them that they are actually getting activity and productivity from their staff while being remote. They're seen as an easy option. You know, you buy a software package, you know, you have it installed on people's computers. You then feel like as an employer that you're somehow in control of you know, this new dispersed workforce that are all all, all working from home. But if you look at the academic research on the topic, you find that these systems might not be accomplishing what you expect. The evidence most broadly in the academic literature is that hard quantitative targets don't work. They don't make people feel good about their work. They don't make people feel happy and secure in their employment. Uh, And so they tend to have an effect of, well, burnout is one of the main ones and decreasing morale. Implementing a surveillance or productivity tracking essentially masks a deeper, more systemic issue. And that is, do people actually know what makes them successful at work? We've known since the 50s that people do their best when they're given their goals, they're given the tools to meet their goals, and they're set on their way. There are ways in which the psychological pressures of being watched can actually impair productivity. You want to say to an employer, have you thought about talking to your workers? You know, like asking them what's going on, like having a discussion, because often, you know, it's that kind of genuine engagement that is what makes everybody's experience uh, of work better. Data generally shows that employees are actually more productive when they work from home because they usually start earlier and they work later uh, with fewer interruptions than they do in the office. So if people are on average as productive or more productive at home, are there still reasons to use a system like this? inevitably averages mask people who are both less productive and more productive. And so because you can't distinguish who those employees individually are who are more productive and less productive, unless you actually track them, that's the justification for tracking them. When you don't have visibility, you don't know who is like really working super hard and who is taking a a COVID-19 vacation. I do think that there are very few times in the workplace where you could reasonably say the employer doesn't have a right to know what I'm doing or to not control my behavior or my conduct. And so we increasingly find that um, employees are willing to forego some of their privacy in exchange for jobs, particularly in the current uh, uh, economy. 
a lot of these questions lead to bigger ongoing issues about data and privacy. I think there's this idea that, you know, if you're generating data, uh, capturing data from people when they're working from home, at least then you as a manager can say, well, I, you know, I, I bought this software in, you know, I tried to do everything I could do. I mean, for me, it's OK if they use it in terms of big data. OK, in general, these are the things that we need to work on. We've got people spending too much time on chat or whatever it is. But when it gets down to, to individual data, it's just I can't think of any other reason you would do it than you don't trust your people. And while worker surveillance isn't anything new, much of this particular kind of surveillance is new. The law simply is not keeping up with this technology. Right now, what we have are general laws that say um, while employees don't have a lot of privacy, they do have some, right? And so the law really does need to play catch up. I think it is probably true that we need to be advocating for greater legal protections and greater restrictions on what employers reasonably can and cannot do. Both ProtoScore and Transparent Business promote the idea of openness and keeping workers informed on what's happening. But companies are not legally required to do that. So you don't need you don't need their permission because it's all company, it's all, it's company, all company data. data it's all company data. It's the yeah. company, the, the systems they are currently using. So there's a lot of data points that companies get. They don't have to share. We advocate for sharing it. So if they don't track and surveil workers, what should companies be doing when their employees are working from home? Darren Murph is head of remote for GitLab, a company that has operated its more than 1,200 person workforce all remotely since its inception. For a lot of managers, this is a jarring moment for them where they have to kind of question everything that has got them thus far and learn in real time what it takes to be a great remote manager. GitLab doesn't use surveillance software. It instead focuses on documenting metrics and objectives, fostering open communication, and emphasizing results. The key here is don't just look at how often someone is sitting in front of their keyboard or in front of their desk. That was never a great way to measure productivity even in the office. Fundamentally, we believe that you should measure results, not hours spent. And that's how it already works for many people in management. When are we going to start measuring the CEO's productivity? At the end of the day, it's investor returns and how we do that and grow the stock price, right, for public or private companies. We have milestones, we have due dates, we have reminders, but it's on each individual and team and leader to use these functions to keep us all on track. At the core of it, humans are not robots. We are empathetic beings, and especially in a remote setting, the fabric of that, the culture of that is really important for morale to stay high and for people to feel like they're connected as a team and not just another cog in the wheel. For some, much of this comes down to what it is you're trying to accomplish in the first place. Is that drive towards productivity the only thing that we want from work? You know, if it is, buy the software packages, have viewing of people's desktops while they're at home the whole time. But I don't think that's the kind of organization that many people want to work for today. One of the kind of lessons that people maybe can take away from this during the pandemic is just because a new tool is going to be used or is proposed to be used doesn't mean it has to be. Work should be a negotiation. So this is a point of inflection for managers and workers both. And there are many employers that are looking at this and thinking, this is a real opportunity to reshape work, to change whether people think surveillance is acceptable or not, to change who needs to be in the office and who doesn't. Will it benefit people who are working and are now able to work in new ways? Or will it benefit employers who will find new ways to, to get the most out of uh, of people's time they've bought to make people work even harder and so on. Employees can help too. You, you can manage up. Um, working from home, particularly when you're new to it, and particularly when your manager is new to it, requires more communication, not less. Checking in in the morning, uh, checking in in the afternoon, you know, having once a week get togethers and micro goals so that you know you both understand, okay, am I working on the right thing? Am I getting my job done? And you're sort of telling your manager, don't worry about it, I'm getting my job done. I think for companies far and wide, you're starting to see that the further people are from you, the more you have to let go and enable them and empower them to move the business forward. You cannot run a remote team successfully long term through micromanagement and fear. As we're seeing the world open up and remote opportunities are everywhere now, people that are under that type of duress will inevitably start to look at other companies which are more trusting and more autonomous.